Hello everyone, reporting today for First of Cakes Now, I'm Abhas, and with me here is Team 21579, testing is optional from Tucson, Arizona. They recently competed at the Arizona State Championship, being the finalist alliance captain in their division, as well as the Think Award winner. This team just has a really, really clever differential lift and intake uh, extension mechanism that is just so, so cool. I think teams have a lot to learn from this, uh, especially for this year's center stage game, so I'm excited to jump into it on Behind the Box. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Okay guys, so uh, you know the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is your intake. You know, we'll get to the diffy uh, eventually, but let's you know first start with the front and then we'll go through. So walk me through the design of your intake, uh, just a brief overview, and then we can jump into specific components. So for our intake this year, we went with an active intake. So it's basically just surgical tubing mounted on 3D printed mounts. Uh, and then we have this counter roller down here on the bottom to help kick the pixels up off the ground. And this whole intake is powered by two servos, one on each side. And the entire intake system is mounted to this virtual four bar system. So that allows us to keep the whole intake um, parallel to the ground along the whole range of travel. Got it. Yeah. And so, you know, with, uh, you know, you said you're using two servos to power the whole intake. So then I assume those are in continuous mode. Is that correct? Yeah, they're both in continuous. Okay. Got it. And so with that, you know, I, I feel like with most teams this season, it's been uh, definitely just as fast of a motor as you can uh, to power the intake. So were the servos the first thing you guys tried or it was something that came about as a result of like how heavy the motor was or packaging or something like that? Yeah, so our we wanted to go with servos just uh, from the start because we wanted our whole intake to be on this virtual four bar. So we wanted it to be as light as possible. Mm -hmm. So we first started out using GoBuilda servos and we noticed that our intake would get jammed a lot because they just didn't have a lot of torque. So we ended up switching to these Axon Minis and that helped a lot. I see, I see. That, yeah, that, that makes a ton of sense. And so now going on to your transfer, you, know, you said you have the pixels go into your intake box and then you have the virtual four bar bring it in um, to the robot. So how does the transfer look uh, from there? Yeah, so we have this out. So we're intaking pixels. Once we have two pixels in there, we'll just flip this virtual four bar back inside the robot. And then this will be the transfer position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that, that makes a ton of sense. You know, simple is always is always very effective. And so with that, you know, I see that you guys don't have like a lid or a roof or anything on your guys' uh, intake where, when the pixels are being stored. Has that been a concern uh, throughout the season? You know, have you had any matches where they've been dislodged or you have mechanisms in place to prevent that? Yes, yeah, so that's been one of, one of the biggest problems we've had. What we've had is these zip ties in here. They're kind of hard to see, so I'm going to flip them up. Yeah. I and they help keep the pixels from bouncing out. I see. And then there's just enough tension so that way the pixels can come out the back here where, they are, where there aren't any. Got it. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And so now from a transfer perspective, what does your uh, gripper look like that then interfaces with the pixels to pick them up? Yeah, so we decided to go with an internal cam gripper. Mm -hmm. So it uses a servo and um, a 3D printed cam. And then we have these three hooks that are actuated by that cam. And those are sprung loaded by a rubber band. So what this allows us to do is we can turn the servo and the cams will spin and then the arms will actuate in and out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, while we're already there and we have a really nice shot uh, of your whole gripper, I can see you guys are running what looks to be a very thin uh, timing belt. So can we just get some information on that? You know, how thin is it, what pitch, and how has it worked out for you guys uh, so far this season? Yeah, so these are just HTD 5 belts. They're six millimeters thick. Um, and then, so we're running this virtual four bar, but it's not just one to one like normal virtual four bars. It's actually three to two. Okay. So we have, I think, a 24 tooth on this side and then a 16 tooth on this side. I see. So what this allows us to do is we don't need an extra servo to control the 
the angle of the deposit. So basically, when we're at our transfer position, they will be uh, parallel to the ground. Mm -hmm. And then at our deposit position, they'll be at 30 degrees to match the angle of the bank. Yeah, no, that, that makes a ton of sense. And so one thing I've been wondering about that, uh, you know, with teams who don't have a uh, fixed angle mechanisms is when you're actually picking up the pixel and taking it out of the deposit, do you have issues with uh, with how the pixel is oriented and, you know, when it, when it like kind of angles upwards and goes through that 30 degree uh, rotation or 120 degree rotation, does that mess up your transfer at all? Or was that something you had to like work around? How does that look? Um, so it's basically, it's going to be at the exact same angle every time we transfer uh, at that zero degree. So it's been a bit of a problem because uh, the way we designed it, it's a little finicky to where the position of the pixel is. Mm -hmm. So like if the pixel is like more than about a quarter inch away from where we want it to be, it won't transfer. So when when we have just one pixel in the intake, it, it's a little inconsistent, but when we have two, it's, oh, they're always in the right place. Sure, yeah. And so, you know, the last thing before we get into your guys' Diffy is with the arms on your deposit. I see that you guys actually have two separate arms uh, and they look to be independently controlled. So walk me through the decision behind that. Was that the first thing you guys tried this season or is that like, why did you end up uh, with this design? So we wanted to do that. So we, they are independent. So mm -hmm. one server on each side. So this is mostly for autonomous. So the way that we score our purple pixels during autonomous is we just have our purple on um, one of the grippers mm -hmm. and we can just flip it back like this mm -hmm. and just drop it behind the robot. So while we have the yellow one stored inside the robot, we can have this pixel one or the purple one out of the back. So I we can see. use those arms independently. Yeah, no, that, that makes a ton of sense. Okay, so, you know, now getting into the thing we're all really here for is the Diffy. So walk us through the whole mechanism. You know, I guess for a lot of our viewers, it might be their first time seeing a differential really implemented on an FTC robot. Uh, so let's start from the basics and then we can dive in more uh, into the technical details. Yeah, so basically what this system allows us to do is we have two motors that can independently control two separate mechanisms. So these two mechanisms that we're powering is our horizontal extension slides and then our lift slides. Mm -hmm. So the way it works is down in here, you can see we have two separate differentials um, and they're geared together set are differently in each side. So on one side, they're geared together by gear and then the other side, they're geared together by a pulley. So you can tell that they, those have opposite rotations. And then we just have a motor on each side driving the differentials. So we actually have a little model over here that we made to help demonstrate this a little better. Okay. Um, I'm gonna put it down. So if we spin the motors in the same direction, mm -hmm. that bottom one will go. Okay. And then we can reverse it just fine. But yeah. if we spin the motors in opposite directions, the top one will spin. And then we I can see. also reverse that. And then we can also do any combination in between those two. So we can power both at the same time, whatever we want. So this just allows us to power two separate systems using just two motors, but we can use the power of both motors to power both systems. So this helps for when we're, we like, we use our lift to hang during a game, but we need a lot of torque to be able to pull the entire roll off the ground. So we can just use the power of two motors to do that. No, yeah, that, that makes a ton of sense. And so, you know, lots and lots of questions there. Um, I guess my first one is, I noticed in your model and then a little bit in some of the close-ups I've seen of your robot is, you won't have like exactly perfect standstill of the other uh, part of the differential if you're only wanting to power one, right? So you'll see like some wobble of the top uh, set of axles or the, or the bottom set of axles. So is that an issue for you guys? Do you have like some mechanism in the robot to deal with that or is it software? How do you guys work around that? So it definitely is an issue to an extent because it does introduce the drift in each subsystem. One of the big ways that we've just countered it is when we want to reset everything back to the zero position, we just drive it all the way back beyond the, like what should be the minimum position. We would prefer to use encoders on the output axles However, we weren't able to get any, so we just used the encoders on the two um, internal motors. I see, I see. Yeah, and so uh, from there, 
when you are using, uh, you know, the differential throughout the match, would you say like how actively are you using that intake extension? You know, have you have you seen a huge benefit uh, from this mechanism because because of your intake extension use, or was it more something that you wanted to explore as an engineering endeavor? Um, yeah. So it was just a really fun project that I'd been working on, and. So we had three qualifiers before our regional. Mm -hmm. uh, we had just been running normal motors for all those qualifiers. So before states, we put in this uh, power takeoff mechanism. Unfortunately at state, we weren't able to run it because we were having a few problems with it. Um, but realistically, I think it would help because our, our horizontal extension can extend about four and a half feet out. So it'll help a lot in autonomous for cycling a lot faster. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in teleop, it can depend on the situation you're in, but yeah. No, that, that makes a ton of sense. Uh, and so, you know, as far as uh, other teams in the community go, if, if a team was interested in making a mechanism like this, how uh, readily available are the components, you know, are, are like the gears and belts and uh, pulleys and everything that you mentioned commercial off the shelf parts or were they things you made yourselves? How, how does that look? Yeah, so a lot of the gears that you see in here are are just go build the gears. So mm -hmm. all these silver ones, all these black ones, they're all just standard go build the ones. Um, so you can see the actual differential housings that are the outputs. Mm -hmm. Those are custom 3D printed. Um, so there's not really any off the shelf component that you could buy for those. You really those have to be custom. Um, and then we are using axon bevels to couple the motors to the differential, but you could use any bevels you want really. Um, and then we are using 3D printed pulleys for the extension. Got it. And so with those axon bevels, was it really just about the packaging or the ratio? How does how does that work? So yeah, it was the ratio. So we have 1150 motors, okay. so they're two 1150s. Um, and then so we have the small gear on the motor, so it gears it down. So actually we're running different ratios for the lift and the extension. So okay. we're actually running about 400 RPM on the lift and then about six, 700 RPM on the extension. Wow. Because the extension doesn't, it doesn't have to be as torquey, it doesn't matter. Or about the lift, we want more torque. So we actually have different ratios. Wow, yeah, that, that is really, really cool. All right, well, testing is optional. Thank you guys so, so much. You know, I was really excited uh, to have the opportunity to talk with you guys. You have a really fantastic robot and so much going on uh, on the hardware and software side. So again, thank you so much for this interview. I really hope we get to see you guys uh, compete again at some off-season competitions in center stage. You know, if not, I'm sure next year robot will be just as fantastic, if not better. So testing is optional. Thank you so much. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Abbas, and this is Team 21579. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.